Okay, um, I'm just going to quickly go through mission three with you. You've already watched the video. If you haven't, make sure you go back and watch the video to refresh your memory about DNA and nucleotides. Some of you may be studying that right now. Um, if you didn't, if, you, if you're not studying it right now, it was a while ago uh, since you did it, and you need to refresh your memory because you want to be comfortable with DNA and nucleotides and the genetic code. So same format that we've done on all the other missions. You're going to watch this video. Really good. This is really good. This is probably one of my favorite. I love when it starts going into um, like DNA and the effect DNA has on uh, evolution and species uh, variation. So there's three interactives. I'm just going to go to one fish, two fish, red fish, lung fish, and show you that um, uh, phylogenetic tree that you're going to build. So the same format, you're going to write down these different fish um, aquatic species. <laughs> and th these characteristics are not, I mean, we can talk about the physical characteristics, but you're not writing really anything down here. You're not going to do that until we get to the end when we actually look at their nucleotides, their sequences of letters, A, T's, G's, and C's. But you can read about it, and you can see now that we're talking about uh, there's two fish species, and then we have the great white shark. You can read about the great white shark. Um, we've got a lungfish, and then, wow, we have a clawed frog, so um, another aquatic. And now we get into the kind of the meat and potatoes here. This is very simplified, as they indicated, but it's still quite well done. So they have our outgroup, which is the great white shark. I love when they do that because we know that one's going to be what they talked about in the instructions, the far right-hand side, or you do it the far left-hand side, doesn't matter. I just followed what they did. And we're looking at different positions in their genetic code, and we're looking, they talk about different positions and these positions being um, in these organisms, they looked at position one, and this area is position two, but there's no data for that. We have got a position three, we got a position four. The only reason they have the number five written there is to keep kind of it organized and to show you each of those columns. So we have a one, a three, a four, and a 10. And we're writing down those codes and those are the um, letters that exist in those positions. There's going to be some that are going to be the same, meaning those species are closer together um, related or more closely related, and some are going to have uh, lots of differences in those, um, the letter or the nucleotide that is present in that position. The best way to learn about this is to do it. So I'm just going to do my little cheat table here. I also have it written down and I'm going to start building this according to uh, the nucleotide position. So this is getting into DNA, looking at DNA and determining similarities or um, relations uh, according to uh, genetics and genetic code. So we knew that great white shark was the outgroup so I'm going to uh, leave that guy um, to the outside and then I'm going to start looking at my table I could actually look at this one um, I'm I know it's at the out group so I'm really having to do with one two three four different uh, uh, species so I can see that in position um, three and four that they uh, all have C so I'm just going to put those ah. so there's my great white shark that is you know, the elk group and then I have um, these other organisms that all have um, the letter C in position 4 so I'm just I know I kind of jump around on this but if you look here at this table, they all, even our shark, 
has letter C in position 2. So there must be a letter C in position 3. I did that wrong. It's position 3. Okay. We have letter C in position 3. So they all have letter C in position 3. So I filled that in. So I have C in um, position 4. And then I have... Um, Going to come off of there, and so the cichlid is going to fit there, I believe. So, what's the connection between the frog and the lung fish and this guy? So, they have we're now moving to um, position 10. So who has A in position 10, the lungfish and the frog? So the lungfish and the frog are uh, closely, more closely related because they have A in position 10. Okay. And how are these three, three all connected? They have T in position 1. So again, it's going to tell us if we have that correct. Again, I'm just reading from the table. That's all I'm doing. And there we go. We've got the answer. So that at least helps you out with that one. But this is a little bit different. Now we're not looking at physical characteristics. We're looking at genetics. And we're going to go back later in, in some of the missions back to physical and go back and forth. But you really are getting a handle on how you can combine all these physical and genetic characteristics and build your phylogenetic tree. Okay. And that's it. Happy tree building.